Okay, sorry about that. Um, seems like there's an issue with my system, but okay. So we got the inventory model. So you can see there, you got moving average, FIFO, a whole bunch of options here. Then this example, we're actually gonna go into FIFO. Okay, we're also gonna post physical and financial. I'm not gonna get into detail about this, but this is very important that you understand all of these options so that you can choose this correctly. Okay, so let's go back. Um, I don't think it's going to remember, so let's go into release products. Okay, let's get the birds well again. Cool, so we can go in yet. Yeah. Okay, so let's choose the item model group here. And let's finish goods. Perfect. Okay, the product life cycle state, I've put in here needs to be approved. Uh, so let's leave that as blank, but you can create as many product life cycle states as you want. So when you purchase this unit, what are you purchasing? What unit of measurement? Um, so is it each, is it a carton? Is it, uh, could be anything really. Um, for some reason I don't have anything set up here. I should have purchase units each. Uh, Okay, give me a second. I think I know what's causing that. Uh, oh, I need product group. So let's just go down, down, down. And I'm going to put in the item group first. Default. Let's validate here just to see how far we're tracking. Okay, so I need the sales unit, um, but let's go into purchasing unit. I think that should allow us now to enter the unit. No, okay, so let's fix the sales unit then. Okay, so under sales, we've got the unit. Oh, it's because, sorry, it's because all. So let's choose each. Okay, ignore me. Okay, so under purchasing, that's where we were yeah so under purchasing we're gonna go into unit we're gonna make sure that convertible isn't selected but rather all and we can choose each okay then I can look at a buyers group we're not gonna have buyers group within this example but that's obviously certain in large organizations you can specify who's allowed buying which items Okay, who's the vendor? We're not going to choose that. The item taxation group becomes quite important because we're in Australia. We're going to put GST. Okay, um, we're going to then, let's put a price here. We can just say 150. We're going to say price quantity one. Charges group, we're not going to use charges group within this example, but basically then you could actually add charges to the purchase of this item, things like freight, things like handling, etc. Um, Okay, so if you have a, if you must purchase it from an approved vendor, what happens when people try to uh, purchase it from someone else? We can choose warning, no check, or not allowed. Okay, and then deliver. We're not going to go into deliver it's for this stage. Sales order. We've got a unit of each. Okay, we've also got a commission group. If our uh, sales pe uh, people earn commission on the selling of that item, item GST group. Again, I'm going to choose GST because we're in Australia. Okay, uh, let's not go too detailed in there. Um, so, are we going to use an alternative product? For us, we're going to say no. It's you can only get this product. You can also say when you can sell this, right? So this would be if you have like a, a, you know, so in the clothing industry, for example, they'll have seasonal products, but they won't sell it the next season. So you could then actually have your sell site and sell end date. Uh, you can also have rebates. So are there rebates within this item? Okay, so manage the inventory. So again, if we wanted to track, we could choose the batch number here or the group and the serial number group. We can also choose the counting group. So counting group becomes very important uh, in terms of things like cycle counts and stock takes. So let's go into this in a bit more detail. I haven't set up a, a counting group, but if I wanted to, I'd create a new counting group. Let's call it default. And I could say, what's the counting code? Do we then manually count this? Is it periodic? 
do we only count when we've got zero in stock or do we initiate a cycle count when we have minimum stock so for this one we could say manual you know we don't really count it or when we do it's automatic or if you want you could do counting period so every i don't know 20 days and then what you could call this is uh 20 day cycle counts and then any stock within that counting group you could then do a, a cycle count every 20 days um okay cool so where else are we now uh so kind of group again the unit over here let's just say each okay and then there's a bunch of stuff packing group we won't really get into shelf life so shelf life if in case things expire um okay and we got into the engineer so we got the bill of materials unit which we'll get into in another episode we've also got the production pool production group uh, as well as the calculation group uh, so calculation group let's go into here just to expand upon it so calculation group is how do you calculate the costs of this item during the course of the production cycle right so we are using the item cost price um, and we are using the cost price in the cells so you can actually see you know you can stop explosion of that cost so then you wouldn't actually be charged for each individual line item in that bill of materials but rather only the final one but we'll get into that in a lot more detail um okay so let's actually try save this it should auto save but i'm from the old school i, I tend to manually save let's try validate again okay so this is actually valid but let's see if we've missed any important elements here coverage group okay so this becomes very important in terms of uh replenishment of stock so i think this is quite important to break down so i've set up a few here so do we manually order this item do we order when uh do we have min and max quantities that we want to maintain do we do, do a monthly replenishment or i put on demand here so this for example would be expensive items so we only order when needed so we only order for example when we've got a sales order of this item or do we do weekly replenishment and these coverage groups will then feed into your stock replenishment so your automated purchase orders your procurement so very good to kind of uh, start using these pretty early okay so item group we entered earlier i didn't expand too much on it this is really down to your accountant so really you, you you're gonna have to have a, a close conversation and relationship with your accountant in order to set these up correctly so what you want to do is you want to make sure all your main accounts are configured for this so for example where do you want all of the financial implications of these transactions to occur so when you're doing a sales order where do you want the cost of units cost of goods all of this stuff where do you want it to reflect in your chart of accounts and your general ledger so very important that uh, you collaborate closely with your financial uh, team in order to make sure that those are configured correctly uh, we can also have a project category we won't get into that at this stage though uh, you can have financial dimensions on this good if you want to track things like product uh, brand product group etc and there we go so let's just choose a configuration here though oh, no. um, so yeah okay let's get into that in another video but now for example we know this product is valid so now we can actually start selling and purchasing this product so within the next exercise what we'll do is we'll start getting into bill of materials um, as well as things such as product variance okay